零一五二零一六台湾空间美学新秀大赛 （Taiwan Interior New Talent Award） 进场。除了多位新秀参与竞赛，也邀请国际大师来台与设计人们进行深度对谈。Probably the most impressive refurbishment is、um, a loft penthouse I've done in central London. It's from an, a very old building, formerly a train station, where we took the top three floors of the loft structure. The difficult thing here was that it's 150 years old. To obtain permissions was difficult. And it took two years just to plan, you know, how to open this whole volume up and deal with the existing structure. This project consists of、um, three-story opening. So we took out all the floors, and you have a 15-meter-high ceiling, and we exposed all the timber trusses. It depends very much on the project,、um, but of course the feeling I want to create is comfort and a good home. Most of my projects are apartments, people people live, so it has to be practical, it has to be functional, it maintains interesting over time, so in a way timeless. In the context of refurbishing an existing building, I think it's important to to work also with the building, so there is. There is the client, there is the owner, the user of the apartment or the space, but then also there has to be a respect to the existing building. What I've learned in the years is, you have to look at it as a financial investment, as well as something that is beautiful and that you have to design that looks good. So I think it's important. That designers are able to advise their client that they produce something that keeps the value, so nothing that is too personal, nothing that is just fashionable. It has to be something, you know, that they don't regret. It's also important that、um, interior designers and architects are very clear with their clients, who can be novices, who they can be not professional,、um, that decisions they make will cost a lot of money. So it's important to be very clear. Um, and professional, but you should also have fun. <laughs> 看完英国老建筑改造大师 Thomas Green 的专访，澳洲获奖无数跨领域设计大师 Alexander Lauderstein 又是怎么说的呢？ I guess one of my main sources of inspiration is always traveling. Ever since from a young age, I've been traveling the world. You know, initially as a backpacker, I think that the idea that design it's a link to culture. It's a very important stream through my through my design practice. I was born in Argentina to Polish parents, and as I was saying before,、uh, culture and travel has always been part of my I guess my DNA. I always feel that、um, uh, with my work, it's always an international approach. When、uh, you're faced with a problem and you come up with the smartest solution, not only functional but aesthetic, something that、uh, will have value in every level and also that contributes to to the fabric of society. I think it can enrich our life、uh, both emotionally and、um, and functionally. It is really about creating environments and fitting them out with、uh, with beautiful furniture that that makes our life、uh, more enjoyable. Most important thing that it can bring is first we can actually create、uh, custom solutions to those interiors. Second, I think it can really create a sense of ownership and emotional connection. And I think that that's a very important thing to feel comfortable and and,、uh, and empowered in, in in an interior. 而日本代谢派传人新锐建筑师平田晃久的专访，则以不同角度谈跨界设计。啊，メタボリズムっていうのは、あ日本の1960年代に、えー、起こったあの建築のムーブメントなんですけれども、あのその時には、えー、建築を生命のメタファーで捉えて。新陳代謝するっていう考え方が提出されたんですが、まああのそれ考え方としては良かったんですけれども
あのどこか少し理想主義的すぎるところがあってあのうまく機能しなかったわけです。であのメタボリズムのムーブメントと僕の作品は直接の関係があるわけではないんですけれどもあのそこから引き継いだ考え方っていうのはあると思いますしその考え方を新しい仕方で発展させることができるんじゃないかというふうに思います。僕はあの日本の大阪の結構山の近くで育ったんですけれども、えー、昆虫少年というか昆虫を撮るのが大好きで,でその時に自然の中の空間と、えー、まあその建物の中の環境が全然違うなというふうに感じていてで、まあ、僕がこう建築を始める一つのきっかけとなったのはそういうその建築の中に自然の環境のようなまあ自由さを持った場所を作れないかっていうふうに思ったんですね。えっと、できるだけその、うん、自由というかあの解放された感じを味わってもらいたいなと思っていてで、まあ、その自然の中の、えー、ランドスケープとかあるいは、えーまあ、森の中とかそんなようなそのスペースの中にいるような雰囲気を体験してもらいたいというふうに思います。来自不同背景的大师分享各自跨界设计的珍贵经验。面对大量未知和新产生的问题，他们跳脱原来单一专业领域的思考模式，与不同智慧携手合作，激荡出属于新时代的火花